To solve for time in our compound interest formula, we combined our knowledge of exponents and logs with our knowledge of compound interest. So let's take a moment to analyze our formulas. Here's our base exponential formula. y equals b to the power of x. And here's our compound interest formula. a equals p 1 plus r to the t. So the a, the amount accumulated, is in place of our y. The t, or the time, is our x, the exponent. And b is the base of our exponent. And that would be everything in brackets here, 1 plus r. Considering the base, and we remember that if b is greater than 1, then we have exponential growth. So this makes sense in that it's a plus in here, right? With a plus, we know that our base will have to be bigger than 1. So it all makes sense so far. But what about the p, the principal out front here? It's not part of the base as it's outside the brackets. It's a coefficient, multiplying by everything. So when the exponent t is 0, and we know that anything to the 0 is 1, but now we're multiplying by p. So really the starting point is p, and we grow from there. Basically, everything is being multiplied by p, or we have a vertical expansion by p. It's the same exponential shape, but we're starting at a number other than 1 when t is 0. This comparison of formulas leads us into a new type of problem, population growth. In many situations, the growth of a population is exponential, and our equation to describe this growth would be p equals p naught times 1 plus r to the power of t. Very similar. In this case, p is the current population. p naught is the original population, the multiplier our starting point at time equals zero. What is the population we're starting with prior to the growth? Now, the r and the t, well, they're the same in that r is our rate of growth per compounding period, and the t equals the number of compounding periods. Pretty darn similar, right? Easy to remember. Example, a population of 100 rabbits doubles every month. How long until you have 1,000 rabbits? Now, since we're told that it's doubling every month, we know that we're looking at exponential growth. The population doubles after the first compounding period, that is, after the first month, and then the new population doubles again during the second compounding period, or the second month, and so on. So, let's pull out our population formula. P equals P naught, 1 plus R to the T. And we're solving for time. So let's isolate the T. We'll switch both sides, get the t on the left, and then let's divide both sides by p naught, and the p naught is cancel out, and we'll log both sides. And we've incorporated the power rule so the t is out front, and we see that we can divide both sides by log 1 plus r, and they cancel. And there we go, an algebraic solution for t. And we can plug in our numbers. P over P naught is, well, 1,000, the new population, over 100, the original population. And the rate is, hmm, we're told that the population doubles each compounding period, which means that the population grows by 100% each month. So, R equals 100%, or 1. And so in our brackets, we have 1 plus 1. And our base is 2, which makes a lot of sense. After one compounding period, the population doubles, or is timesed by 2, and so on. The base makes total sense. And we pull out our calculator, and we get 3.3. And that's the number of compounding periods. So we'll have to look back. And we see that our compounding period is a month. So our answer here is 3.3 months.